Good morning, Nuggets. It is your favorite TT from Divine Me 1111 Spiritual Guidance. And we outside again. Um, I am trying to light some Palo Santos, of course. But um, the energies lately, especially this past couple of days and, you know, with the full moon and all that fun stuff have been super super heavy and self care is essential um, knowing what's yours and what's not yours what energy to um, engage in and what energy to let be and let God handle is um really big right now is um you know listening to that still small voice um your intuition your discernment whatever you want to call it um it is very much essential i am feeling for the next couple of well for the remainder of your your lifetime of course but Right now, this last part of the year, this last quarter of the year is um, going to be that last little sweeping behind the door, under the rug, and all that stuff is getting everything um, in alignment and cleared for your ascension your takeoff your um what it is that you're called here on this earth to do your your purpose so whatever that is for you anything that is not on that energetic vibration anything that is not um increasing you learning you um anything that is not yours and by not yours, I mean um, the responsibility of someone else to handle. Um, we are to lead by example. We take on our own energy. We take on our own um, responsibility for healing, for uh, moving forward in the world. We take that on ourselves, but we also allow others to take on theirs. Um, we are not responsible for anybody else's healing. We are responsible for exemplifying what it is that we are here to do. And that has been my biggest lesson. So um, if you are an empath, if you are a light worker, if you are a tarot reader or in any form a spiritual guide, you're coming online um, just saw two birds fly past me um, uh, you are coming into alignment with your purpose your path your um, your calling and there are a, a, there's a lot of energy that has been trying to keep you from that it has been 100% a test of your will and your fortitude, um, your faith. Do you trust God to be God and guide you? You haven't gotten this far in life for no reason. So let God be God, but you be you. Um, and when I say that, I mean... As much as you can take action and move forward and grow in your own will, do that. That's your responsibility. When you're called to do something, when it's in your heart, when it's in within you, in your soul, when you're called to do it, that's God telling you, okay, that's, that's part of your purpose. When it's ease, when it's flow, when it is effortless that's when it's time for you to do it 
um, if there is hesitation, if there is, um, learn, learn to discern when God is telling you to sit down and when it's fear, um, telling you to sit down, when it's fear, um, gripping you to be nervous about something, um, to n not be, um, in your highest vibration about it that's sometimes an indication of you needing to say okay what's mine and what isn't some people are afraid to be in their destiny some people have fear about um, being who they are called to be I was one of those people um, in all honesty I was one of those people because of course you know being um, a kind, giving, empathic person, you, your whole life you go through, you know, not feeling accepted, at times being bullied, at times um, feeling other people's energy of them not feeling like they are confident, they are enough. So you take on all of that stuff when your emotions how you feel about yourself. If you're confident, go for it. Don't let anybody take from you that knowingness of self. God gave that to you. Um, if other people are not able to embrace that, those are not your people. Period. It does not matter how long you've known them. It does not matter if you were tied by blood. It means that you are still a sovereign self. Um, anyone who is, um, anyone raised in the Christian faith knows that um, even at the age of 12, Jesus did what he was supposed to be doing he was already you know even before that walking in his purpose and he was unapologetic about it because he he felt called and compelled to do what it is that he felt God was giving him utterance to do he walked in his authentic power and when you when you do that people kind of look at you strange because um, maybe they <clears throat> excuse me maybe they don't know their power maybe they don't know their strength and I have lately been uh, at least the, the past year and a half been asking when do we embody that um, that that Jesus consciousness when do we embody that knowingness of self when do we embody um having that connection, that direct connection between us and God and not allowing religion and ritual and um, other people's um, thoughts about what God is for them to affect us. When do we embody that knowingness of knowing that we have God's power on the inside of us and actually walking in it? rather than just going and sitting in a pew for 30 years and clapping our hands and doing the gestures and mocking someone else's holy language of speaking in tongues or trying to embody somebody else's gift. When do we stop doing that and get to the bare bones of understanding Jesus was trying to tell us that we are gods just as he belonged to God we too belong to God so um, I'm done with the shows um, and that is not to say that everyone in the church is putting on a show that is to say that um, Either we're going to walk in our true authentic power and claim us, or we're just going to 
you know, <clears throat> continue the ritual of making it look good on the outside. I'm telling you, I've been going through some deep, deep soul searching and figuring out what it is that God is calling me forward to do. It took me a, a, a sit down and to really, you know, stop trying to help people. Help me. That was my, you know, my sit down with God. And I'm still being sat down and I'm sitting down. I'm, I am sitting down and listening and when it's time to go I go when it's time for me to sit down I sit down because that is um, that's being in obedience to the energy being in obedience to God and being in obedience to um, divine order um, Do you need validation from other people? Not at all. No one can tell you when, where, and how much when it comes to you and your relationship with God. Not a soul has that authority. So, when it comes to being yourself and being you and owning that do it to 10 because that is honoring God if God put it in you he's calling it out of you for a reason he's calling it out of you so that you can be the example and so others can feel okay with being themselves and not have this this face of what divinity is or this face of what confidence is and truly have it down in your soul and your spirit um, it's been a very inter 2020 come, just came in and just started slapping people I know I was one of them um 2019 December 31st I said I'm not taking this person in the 2020 this person in the 2020 this person in the 2020 I made that list and I still brought those people with me into 2020 so guess what God did he said okay you want to keep playing with what I've given you and keep giving it away to people who are not energetically aligned with you so I'm going to show you that you still have work to do. It's not about the show. And I had to learn that. I had to learn that it's not about the outside or the exterior. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so what? What's your heart condition? I had um, a quote that I have been following for a very very long time and it says you can always tell a person's character by what comes out of their mouth and I add to that you can tell the character by what comes out of their mouth what their heart condition is um People who are not healed are people who walk around throwing their energy around, but they're not projecting love as much as they are projecting self-protection and aggression of don't fuck with me, rather than the loving energy of I know exactly who I am and I embrace exactly who I am and I have the courage and the respect and the love for you to to allow you to be you as you are and 
a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people, there's a meme that, you know, you know, people can be jealous of you don't have to have the same things that someone has to be jealous people can be jealous of your confidence of your um your sense of self and you know some other things or the way that people other people love you and that is very very true and when it is not authentic people can feel it people can see it and then when it's seen and it's brought to brought to their attention they're defensive so I've had to yes very much sit myself down because I've drawn in mirrors of myself and it hurt shadow work is not easy shadow work hurts but it frees you and it gets all that gunky horrible feeling of not being worthy and not feeling enough and searching outside of yourself for validation and and um to justify some of your behaviors quite honestly um and that's just not what we're doing anymore if you are not coming from a truly heart-centered space Your heart condition and your energetic attraction go hand in hand. Your energy is high and it is clear and it is clean and it is peaceful within yourself, within you, your core. Draws in those people and those energies to you and you raise the vibration. Those who are not in that specific alignment draw to that that is within you. And either you help each other, you look at each other as mirrors and you help each other to ascend from that. Or you, the, the, the angst and the energy fight so hard to occupy the same space of you know, um, my hurt is more than your hurt rather than saying, okay, this is triggering me. This is hurting me. What is it about it that I need to fix? And what is it about it that has drawn this to me? Now, sometimes it's meant to help and heal the other person. Other times it's, it's, they're drawn to you to help and heal you, but it's always an energetic exchange. And we are just needing to come into understanding of that so something that helped me i'm plugging somebody else yep this sister's book just um the the cover looks different now i got this on amazon the cover looks different than this but um i am not going to butcher this woman's last name but you all can see it this is um, it's a quick read because it draws you into understanding yourself and um, uh, understanding you know that you are not alone that's what I took from this is I, I got the understanding that I am not the only person who is super sensitive that can that has the gift of Um, picking up on energy and reading people Um, and yeah it's is I I did not want to call it that but um, everything has to have a label in order to be understood so yeah Um, I have been told that I need to shut up that I have been told that um, those things aren't real that I am in my head and I am crazy I'm a witch all kinds of stuff and if that is that person's understanding very well very well um, but I am walking in my in my authentic gifts and as far as I know 
so when when you when you can do that amongst the the negativity and it starts to get even heavier that just means that you're on the right path because that that energy does not want to let you go and it's okay i suppose but you still have a purpose you still have things to do and you let that energy be within itself and 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 allow it to um be with like energies um because that is no longer you and if it is still you and you're still holding on there's some things that still need to be worked on and it's okay we are we there is no way we can be man's definition of perfect man's definition of perfect because the thing is 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 you can let's see someone whom i would consider to be um perfect um I want to say I keep I, what's what's coming to my mind is Michelle Obama, but we'll we'll just go ahead and and and, and take our firm, formal former first lady aesthetically she's beautiful I don't care what anybody says but she's she is smart. Um, and not just, you know, because of her, her accolades and, you know, her attending, you know, um, I'm going to mess it up. I don't remember if it was Yale or Harvard, whichever. It's one of those big Ivy League schools and she has a degree from there and has, you know, she's a lawyer and she is out on on paper you can't do any better but there were still people who you know said that she looked like a monkey her arms are too strong and just all kinds of ridiculous things ridiculous and for us to continue to be in that kind of energy of there is no such thing as perfection. You, you're you always going to piss someone off. So do what you do. Do what it is that God is calling you here to do. Being your purpose. If it sounds crazy to other people, it probably is to them. But it makes perfect sense to you. And if it makes sense to you, that's between you and God. Um... And I am in no way, you know, okaying anything such as, you know, anything low vibrational as far as, you know, hurting children or anything of that nature. Not at all. That's, that's insanity. But what I am saying is there are ways to let people be who they are and you leave them alone. Um... We do not own heaven or hell to put anyone in. So why are we so bent on pointing the finger and telling people that they are wrong when mm, not your responsibility, not your decision to make. People have there are those who are trying to, to who call themselves light workers and trying to help and your energy's not right i know for a fact i was one of those people and i'm but i'm also still working on that and god is releasing me to do certain things at certain times in order to um be an example I am not perfect. Far from it. Whole lot of stuff I still need to work on. Whole lot of things that I still need to um, 
find my niche in my niche whatever however you say that word I'm gonna mess up a lot of stuff but that just you know I'm not perfect and it's okay it's okay to I'm hearing I'm hearing it's okay to fuck up that's what I'm hearing but it is not okay to stay there and continue to perpetuate the same things over and over again that's where you get stuck so we just you know doing what we do and we move forward we learn we grow we you know take on things that are a true challenge and we overcome it um anyone who knows me knows that I am very shy but I am also very strong willed so I sit back and I watch I am learning to do more of that more of the sitting back and watching and observing you know who fucks with me and who doesn't and yeah I'm, I know that those it's so bad for a woman to curse and all that stuff grow up um, and I will too we'll grow together all right um, I had some messages about um, how and why the villain comes about there's a couple of them and it's you know I'm going to give a little bit of it and then we'll close it out because this is getting to be almost 30 minutes. So a couple of the um, villains that I was uh, brought to brought to mind. Um, it says victim turned villain. Carrie, Jason. These are all, you know, like, uh, well, anywho, Carrie. Um, that movie was by, um, it was a book by um, Stephen King. Stephen King scares me, um, but he's brilliant. He's a brilliant author. I can't do all that detail, but he makes sense to me. Um, Jason from uh, the Friday the 13th movies. Um, the recent portrayal of the Joker by um, Joaquin Phoenix. I have not seen that movie in its totality, but I have seen reviews and man, it's 1010 right now. And then the last but not least is Killmonger from um, the Black Panther movies. And uh, there's, you know, let me, I'll just go ahead and, and read some of these um, and then we'll get we'll, we'll be done there are a few times when you root for or understand the perspective of a villain why seeing their perspective lends to understanding why is it so important to be mindful of responsibility um, we as a society uh, as a society have to one another and just how important child rearing is and how we contribute to the development of a person um, some of this is spiritual other things taken as applied okay Carrie a teenage girl isolated and smothered by the one person who is supposed to be her greatest support um, and not dealing with her traumas and psychosis, her mother um, parented with the strict religion, as it as it were. Um, uh, she, you know, she lit candles and locked her in the in a prayer closet and all kinds of just things that turn religion into a punishment rather than a joy to be connected to God. Um, and this uh, led to being uh, completely lost in the world of a small town and small high school 
um, we know how this goes, most of us, you know, we're picked on and then, you know, you, you turn into yourself. Um, and then she finds out that she's gifted with uh, telekinesis. People mess with her and they get fucked up and then she's wrong. Hmm, interesting. Jason Voorhees. Um, a special needs child around normal teenagers who had had enough of being bullied and neglected. He ended up drowning in the fucking lake because he was being neglected by the people who were supposed to be charge of him. Um, and then, you know, with a mother who wasn't fully mentally there herself, um, she, you know, equipped that child to be completely messed up and he just started f***ing people up. But, you know, society don't think nothing wrong with that. Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, his version, um, having a mentally ill mother who was, I will want to say that she was diagnosed with being bipolar, uh, and having to care for her, and then he himself suffering a, a level of psychosis and I want to say the laughing when he was you know in fear or afraid or um, uh, when he was being attacked was considered to be a um, a psychosis an illness that people made fun of him for so okay he started f***ing people up you see the pattern here? Okay. And last but not least, the one that I resonate with, um, and, and, you know, um, no mother, um, raised by a single father trying to make the world a more just and fair place for his son and his African brothers and sisters everywhere. This father, having witnessed the damage done to his people going against his own family and people, um, to be forced uh, to be a force for change in the world only to be slain by his own brother to keep a secret when I'm just I'm that's kind of triggering me because family will do you before a stranger so we'll leave that at that and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up um, there are many other stories to villains with past such as this. The point being is the responsibility of those in rearing a child to be as conscious and educated about their own state of being when giving life. I'm not saying this from a parent perspective. This is strictly from that of a daughter, sister, niece, friend, granddaughter, cousin perspective. It indeed takes a village to raise a child because that child will soon have to intact, uh, uh, have to come in um, contact with people outside that village. If we all look at society and life from that knowing, I believe we will be equipped to make better, higher frequency choices, not centered solely around self. Um, well, I was younger. I didn't want kids. I didn't. And I didn't want them because I felt that I had them already. I have siblings, younger, younger siblings that um, I took responsibility for when that wasn't my job. But I did. So, fast forward to now and I can't get enough of my nieces and nephews because I don't have have children of my own but when we come from the perspective of understanding what our place is what our purpose is we take that into a different level of understanding and seriousness and responsibility um, I know my nieces and nephews just be like oh my god TT not again but I make sure that I 
give them everything of understanding that I have about life so that they are equipped to handle things that I did not handle in those growing up formative years so that they have it now so when they are my age they are ahead of the game that's all we're here to do we're here to inspire and to grow the next generation they're already light years ahead of us they really are and I'm so proud of my nieces and nephews from my oldest nephew who is 19 to my youngest nephew who just turned four I love them and give everything I have to make sure that they understand their beingness and who they are and not allowing things, beings, entities, and people to influence it more than they listen to the God within them. So, all right, Nuggets, that's what I have for today. Um, we'll get into some cards at some time when God says it's okay for me to do so. But until then, we're going to be doing some TT Talks. Because um, that's, again, what I am being released to do. Um, this is... I'm loving this. I love what God gives me to do if nobody else does. I love it. This is my new little um, she tie. It's what I call it. And um, I love it. If you'd like to um, commission one, let me know. And we'll get some going for you. These are $25 for the set. I didn't make a, um, a bracelet with this one. But it comes with earrings, necklace, and a bracelet. And we'll go from there. Um, if you need to get in contact with me for a personal, that information is still in the description box below. I am allowed to do personals. Just not the... The big collective readings right now uh energetic purposes but anywho all the information to get in contact with me will be down in the description box below i send you all blessings and light take care